Hi, I'm Albert Silver, and I'm an editor of Chess-Based News. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to My Games Cloud, one of the most interesting and comprehensive features of Chess-Based Account. If you are seeking to enter games, move games around in databases, create databases, then this is your one place to go. To go there, we go to the Chess-Based Account menu, and we click on My Games Cloud. As we can see when we open it, we have a large interface with a number of buttons on top, which we'll go over, open PGN, databases, and so forth, a list of games from the different databases we have stored, the board itself and notation, and finally, of course, the live book, which is an online database of moves stored and analyzed that you can access and use in order to analyze and research your games. And finally, below, editing features that you can use to annotate your games. Now let's start with the basics, creating a database in the cloud. All databases that you happen to create and save here are saved to your account and only you can view them unless you give them permissions. Permissions can only be given through Chessbase 13 and we'll go through that in the next video. So here we would go to databases and click on the arrow on the side and we have Open Database, Create Database, and Delete Database. Let's create a new one. And we will call it, let's imagine we are entering a game from a tournament we played on uh, live or in a league. League Games. We'll click on OK. And we see now a list of databases, including our new database called League Games. Let's click on that and click OK. Now, naturally, because this is a new database, we can see here League Games, there are no games saved in it. And that's where we will start. Let's create new game by clicking here. And the notation has been blanked out, and we have a blank slate in which to enter our games. Let's start by entering a few moves. Let's say E4. Now, immediately we see the statistics of the live book premium. The premium is because as a premium subscriber you have added features. With the different list of the different moves available that have been analyzed in the live book, the number of games, now these are filtered games, so even though it is accessing a database of millions of games, it is filtering them to only master games. So you don't see the statistics necessarily of ranked beginners, tens of thousands of youth tournaments of children under eight, not that there's any problem with that, but if you're doing research, that's probably not what you want to be using in order to analyze your games. We have the average result, 52%, the ELO average of the, of the players, and of course, you can already see once again here, 22,433 ELO. That is a fairly elevated ELO. And the number of visits. Now, the number of visits is what? When people come online and, let's say, analyze and check out different moves, it's counted as a visit, much like you would access uh, a website, for example. And it allows you to not only see what the most popular moves are, not so much in just what is played, but in what people are actually looking at. Sometimes, if you find a move that, for example, that hasn't been analyzed much, or doesn't have many games but has an unusual number of visits, it's pretty safe to conclude that those statistics will help direct you towards hidden possibilities or forthcoming novelties. Now let's enter a few more moves. Let's say uh, C5, Knight F3. Now we can enter moves, obviously just moving the pieces on the board as we've done here. You can also do this directly through the live book simply by clicking on the moves. Let's double click here on D6. There we go. D4, and if we right-click on it, we have a number of other options. Mark move, mark important move, clear mark, and so forth. These are for entering and analyzing your openings, and we'll go through that in another video. And here we already have different analyses. Why? Because not all of these have a number of representative games, but they do have analyses that have been created by users with computers. 
So for example, we notice that C takes D4 has a large number of games with the percentage and the ELO average, as you would expect. But what about a move, let's say, such as E5? Well, E5, there are no games by master players. You might find them beginner players, though, if we look in the live database. And we have plus 1.47. What is that? Well, offhand, we can see that it loses a pawn. And for that reason, even though the game has never, even though this doesn't come from an actual game, there is computer analysis showing that it loses material. We see d takes e5 plus 1.35. And more analysis. It's not really relevant here, even though it's even though we see now someone analyzed f6. Remember, someone analyzed this doesn't mean someone played this. But we can already see that this move is going nowhere. Let's go back to our main move d4 here and enter a normal move. C takes d4. Knight takes d4. Now, because we've done this in the wrong order. We notice that our main line is actually considered a variation, a line, inside the game. We want this to be the main line. So how do we do that? We come to the bottom and we click on Promote Line. What this does is it makes it, it pushes it forward in the tree, makes it more important and the other moves will be considered less important or put in a line. Click on it and suddenly we have Knight takes d4 as the main line and e5 is only a sub-variation. Now suppose we want to enter some commentary on e5. We'll click on e5, and we can click on text before it, text after, start line, delete it, and cut line. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's start with the basics. Text before, and we'll write also possible is, and click on enter, on the keyboard, and we'll now click on text after the move, which loses after. Now you might notice that we only have possibilities of analysis that show text. What about other things such as exclamation points or other typical chess notation features? All of those are still here where if you go to the move and you right click on it with your mouse all of a sudden we have a tree of a large menu of options mark move strong move bad move blunder equal unclear and many more features so we'll call that let's say a bad move and we'll enter d takes c5 and we'll right click again and we'll say what is winning And there we go. Now suppose we now want to save this game into our database of league games. How would we do this? Well, the first thing we can do is click on Save. Save as new. And immediately we have a list of game attributes, the usual features, where you enter the names, the event, the year, and so forth. So we'll call this oh, Silver Albert Elo. Oh, well, let's give it a modest 2900. We can dream, right? Now let's be more realistic. Um, we'll call this the games. Where was it played? It was played in current home Rio de Janeiro, year 2016, and so forth. And you get the idea. Plus one, one zero. Click OK. We wait a second, and all of a sudden we have a new game saved here in our league games. We can see this over here. Now, of course, you have other features such as flip board, flip it back. You can analyze it with an engine. Let's suppose that we want to double check that D takes C5. Does it really lose? So what would we do? We would click on engine here, 
Give it a second. Now bear in mind, you see here that it says Fritz Engine. It is loading a Fritz Engine, the latest version. However, be aware that even though it is running analysis here, this is running directly on your computer. It is a web-based code directly created specially to run on your computer using only one core, so don't worry, your computer should not freeze. And it is analyzing fairly deeply. Now you might say that on a quad core or a very fast computer, this is nothing. That's certainly true. But if you're looking to just go over and make sure that you didn't overlook an obvious blunder, drop a piece, uh, there's an obvious made in four or five or something, so, uh, something like that, then this is ideal. And that's really what this is designed for. As you can see, it's already going to 14 plies forward, which is seven full moves. And that's more than enough to cover any kind of blunder check you might be doing while you analyze your games. You can, of course, check more variations by clicking on the plus. And now it will show you the two main lines. And you can do it again and get three main lines and so forth. You get the idea. To turn it off, you just come to the top over here and you click on engine once more and you have closed it. Now suppose that you have a game that you want to bring in from some other source. A game perhaps that you saw on Chessbase News, an analyzed game. How would we do this? Well, let's go to the Chessbase News site over here and we have the coverage of the candidates that it's currently just finished. Congratulations Kraken. And we'll click on the report from candidates round 13 where we will find detailed analyses of games. Scroll down and here we have a first game, Caruana versus Svidler. Let's suppose that particular game is one we would like to save and analyze inside of my games cloud. There are two reasons you might want to do that. One, you want to save the game and analyze it at leisure. And two, you might want to look at it on a larger board. Here you'll notice that the replayer, even though extremely convenient, the board is relatively small compared to the overall screen. It is a, it is a convenience, but it's not necessarily ideal. So we have an option down here. It says download PGN, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to click on it. And it says it's saved as inline 5. Good enough. Let's go back to our My Games Cloud. And now we're going to click on Open PGN. Give it a second. Come to Downloads. And over here we're going to go to Inline, as we noticed that that was the name. Open it up, and here now all of a sudden we have the game, Caruana Spittler Candidates. If we click on it, we have all of the analysis available. In fact, we can still save this directly to our database. Right now, let's take a look at what we have here. We can minimize this, and here we have Caruana, and you'll notice that it already brought up thumbnails of pictures of the players. And the board is, of course, much larger, which is very nice, and much more convenient to watch. We can actually, over here in the divider, bring this down a little bit to increase the size of the board. Now, this is a much more pleasant way to look at the game. You can use here, now you'll notice that as we, as we broaden this, all of the other analysis features have appeared here at the bottom. And we can analyze this game in detail now. More than that, however, we can use our keyboard by clicking on the arrows. And here I'm clicking on the right arrow. You notice that we have immediate feedback from the live book. Or you can click on Make Move, Take Back, and directly click forward just as you would anywhere. Now let's come over here and reopen the database option. And we're going to save this game. Save as new. It says click OK. And there we go. And this covers our first 
basic lesson in using the My Games Cloud. In the next video, we will cover options of moving games around in different databases, sharing permissions, and other features as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.